Hi everybody, my name is Mr. Haley. For those of you who don't know me, I teach English 10 and 11 here at Amherst High. I'm just here today to give us a, a little bit of information about the Cheney Wenjack walk that the school is planning to do on Thursday, October 21st. Before we all venture out together to, to walk the perimeter of the property, I wanted to give everyone some information about the significance of this walk and, and why it's an important activity to take part in. I bet a bunch of you already know Chani's story, but Chani Wenjack, who was also misnamed Charlie Wenjack by his teachers, was an Anishinaabe boy born in a Goki post on the Martin Falls Reserve on January 19, 1954. Johnny's story, tragically, is like so many stories of Indigenous children in this country. He fell victim to Canada's colonization of Indigenous peoples. In 1963, at the age of nine, Chani was sent to the Cecilia Jeffrey Indian Residential School in Kenora, Ontario. In 1966, at just 12 years old, Chani ran away from Cecilia Jeffrey, attempting to reunite with his family who lived over 600 kilometers away in a Goki post. Nine others ran away that same day, all but Chani were caught within 24 hours. Chani's body was found next to the train tracks on October 22nd, and the only thing found on his property was a small jar containing seven matches. You would think that stories like Chani's were widely talked about in Canada and that the country was well aware of the history of residential schools, but that just wasn't the case. The residential schools is not something that was really talked about in this country by most people. It's not something I was taught in school. It's not something I was taught in university. And it's only really come to my attention in the past 10 years. I'm well into my teaching career and, and halfway through my life and this is something that has sadly only come to my attention recently. I'm not the only person who is learning about this as an adult. Um, a musician by the name of Gord Downey, the lead singer of the Tragically Hip, is also someone who learned about this late in his life and like me and presumably a lot of other people, he was saddened and embarrassed by not knowing the history of his own country. Gord was sadly battling cancer when he decided to record an album telling Chani's story. The album and the coinciding graphic novel were called Secret Path. In August of 2016, Gord asked all Canadians to look at the state of Indigenous settler relations in this country and to do something to change them for the better. In December of 2016, Gord was given the Lakota spirit name Wikapi Omani, which can be translated as man who walks among the stars for his reconciliations. So inspired by Chani's story and Gord's call to build a better Canada, the Gord Downey and Chani Wenjack Fund was founded and it aims to build cultural understanding and create a path toward reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. The goal of the organization is to improve the lives of Indigenous people by building awareness, education, and, and connections between all Canadians. And the Walk for Wenjack is one of their reconciliations that they try to do every year and encourage Canadians all across the country to take part in during this week of October. So that's why this Thursday, we'll be participating in the Walk for Wenjack as a school. I really hope it's something we can continue doing and, as a school and, and growing in the years to come. You're encouraged to try to wear orange or to wear your Every Child Matters pin that was handed out a couple weeks ago. It's also okay to wear purple, as is the color of the uh, Chani Wenjack organization. And I would also just ask that you keep in mind as we're walking our, our property at school that we are in Mi'kma'ki. It's the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Thanks for listening, everybody. I hope you learned something, and I'm really excited to see everybody out on Thursday as we walk for Wenjack. Thanks.